Welcome to this next episode of YouTube where we're going to actually give you an ethology quiz. Ethology is the study of behavior and we've developed the ethogram that helps people code behavior and categorize and ultimately interpret behavior. Uh, but we thought we'd uh, put a piece in here in this week's YouTube that will allow you to maybe use your behavioral observation skills to be able to identify some behaviors. So before we always ID behaviors, we ID individuals. And again, just a reminder, this is Denali. Denali is the tallest of the two in the exhibit pack, more gold and brown in coloration versus Aiden. Aiden is a little bit smaller frame, um, darker coloration, and uh, oftentimes um, uh, uh, more likely to be um, around the humans that are filming. One of the other interesting things that occurred this week is that the ground thawed. Now we still have a lot of snow, but um, the frost went out of the ground, which means that the pond drained on a warm day. So we still have a lot of snow to melt, but what basically it means is that we had a lot of deep snow. Uh, the ground was fairly insulated, so we didn't have a very deep frost. So that went out pretty quickly, and so the pond is ready to fill as soon as we can get rid of some of the residual ice and snow on top of the surface. So again, this is Denali, and we'll leave you to interpret the behavior. Okay, so the answers to the ethology quiz, and I'll just kind of give you an idea as we um, as we go through here what uh, we're observing. And this is Denali uh, doing a side rest. Aiden approaches. Uh, both have a tail wag. Denali does a stand tall, um, kind of faces off with Aiden. Aiden uh, uh, presents himself, and Denali does a chin rest, and that's again a sign of dominance. That puts Aiden into a passive submission where he drops down and he rolls over and submits. And Aiden does a rub under head or rub under chin with Denali. They do a little bit of jaw spar with Aiden doing some face licking. And Aiden does a four leg stab. Again, another rub under chin and another four leg stab. These are 
Uh, if they were a little more excitable, they call we call them obnoxious submission. But uh, at this point, it's pretty passive submission. And Denali does a pin on Aiden where he takes his mouth and pins Aiden by the neck in a subordinate posture. Again, uh, Aiden pawing up, and that pawing up is actually uh, submission, you know, seeking uh, contact. Um, a four-leg stab can be a sign of antagonistic or testing, but in this case it's just, um, you know, letting him know that he approves or he's actively seeking that submission. Denali, again, being taller, does have a tendency to bite on the top of the head a little bit more than the others. There's a jaw spar there, quick little yawn, some more licking behavior, another chin rest, and a little bit of a ride up, but he pushes him down to try to uh, get a pin. Aiden goes up for a little bit of a block there. You saw where he pushed his front shoulder into Denali. But again, the body posture is showing submission. So in this particular clip, Aiden is the submissive one. And uh, uh, attempting to roll on back there in a full uh, submission. Not quite lifted that back leg on what we call inguinal presentation where he's fully submitting uh, on his back with the back leg lifted. Um, but clearly in that particular scenario, that was a Denali showing dominance over eight. Now in this clip, I'm not sure if you can pick that up, but they picked up a scent of something that came into the backyard. They're bobbing their heads, they're picking up a scent, and again, Aiden uh, puts a, a turns and does a little bit of a standoff or a block with Denali, then rub under chin. Again, another passive uh, behavior that's being displayed there. Both of them come over to try to greet the wolf care staff person and the camera. Uh, pretty socially interactive. Not, again, a, as much possession as we've seen in previous weeks uh, with the camera operator. And a little bit of a parallel gait there. And again, parallel gating is shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder walking. Typically, it's pair bonding done between the dominant male and female. But it, it can also be a social gesture. So that's the quiz. We are not going to continue the quiz in retirement, but you can, like, can follow along if you like here. Shadow's feeling better this week, and you're going to see a raised leg urination. And we know he's feeling better when he does a scrape. And so then he comes over to sniff the camera operator, who had been previously in the other two enclosures. Malik comes over, and the big question is, is Malik going to overmark? Is he going to show some status over Shadow's mark? And he does not. Again, when Shadow was a little bit off in the last week, Malik took advantage of that, gained a little status over it, and now we're, um, again, seeing a little bit of change as Shadow feels better. The Doug Den, um, if you recall last fall, they started digging this den. It's got a little bit of a, a snow melt, uh, ice condition in it, but it is ready to uh, be excavated, and they have been in it uh, and are going to start to dig or have shown evidence of starting to dig. And again, again, Shadow was feeling a little bit better. Um, did a mark there. Malik is just doing a rub on, uh, rub on the uh, trees that are in the enclosure. Malik's going to come over and walk and sniff, but does not do an overmark. So Shadow here is doing a chin rest on Malik. You can see that abscess again still dried up um, there on Malik's cheek. But Malik, uh, um, Shadow has got a little bit of, of t lost time in dominance to make up for um, in this past week. So we're going to see a lot more posturing. And again, it's nothing um, too significant. You see Grizzer in the background there, um, focused and watching. And actually, uh, Shadow Malik started a little bit of growling. You see uh, Malik in uh, H1, H2, and almost H3 hackles, meaning hackles on his neck and his mid-back and, and on his rump. Malik was a little bit anxious about that particular uh, episode, and there was a little bit of conflict, and that picked up Grizzer's interest in, and stimulated Grizzer to howl. But at this point, like I say, they're... They're uh, um, just posturing really a bit. Shadow's going to do a follow uh, to be able to, again, reassert his dominance over Malik. And that's about the extent of the dominance hierarchy that we see there. Now, with Grizzer, we thought we'd give you a little bit of a close-up view of what Grizzer's life is like with wolf care staff. And, and again, Grizzer gets a... Um, daily, you know, checks, inspections of the hide. And we're obviously mindful of that head and how it's healing. And we do get a full inguinal presentation where he rolls over on his back and allows for a complete inspection. And while we are cleaning um, his wound, you know, we do basic things like looking at pads, especially in an enclosure that's relatively small. Um, still got a lot of ice. You know, we want to make sure everything's 
going pretty well. Grizzard is so relaxed during these checks that he actually falls asleep and sometimes his eyes roll back into his head. But you can see a various stages of, of, of hair growth that uh, hair on the top just coming back in whereas the rest of his guard hairs are coming out. Uh, continue to have howling, so I'll let you listen to that here. But the howlings have gotten a little bit, um, not quite as, as, as low-throated, uh, certainly a lot more social howling going on. And uh, the stimulus is not so much um, grizzer, meaning that um, uh, grizzer's uh, howling less uh, on his own and not stimulating the pack to respond as much. So uh, we did have a question, which we mentioned a while back. Um, you know, we are... Uh, Still contemplating um, um, how things are going to go for Grizzer. Uh, we're going to try to move forward with an alternate habitat um, as a, a possible scenario for him, but we're also going to contemplate um, trying an introduction in retirement or trying a shadow introduction first and see how things go. But we want to remind um, everyone that we're, we're going to take this very slowly. Uh, there's a couple of key factors we have to wait for. First of all, we want no ice whatsoever in the, in the enclosures. We know that there's going to be activity. We know there's going to be chase scenes. We certainly do not want any any ice conditions that are going to, you know, possibly uh, uh, aggravate a chase scenario. We also, uh, again, want to be very mindful of the relationship between fences of Malik and uh, Grizzer. We just certainly don't want to do anything that might risk uh, uh, problems for Malik. Uh, thirdly, uh, we also want to wait till we've got an increased level of prolactin hormone, which typically cycles. Uh, middle of May and into uh, June and is peaking um, around the end of June into July and then starting to wane off in August. So we uh, will be mindful of that prolactin hormone and that is something that we um, um, successfully transitioned shadow into retirement last June and again we may look at that as being an option for Grizzer. But at this point, um, we do not have a camera on them uh, right now, primarily because we don't have any more ports out in the lab here, and we um, have um, winter conditions to try to rewire another port here. So we anticipate uh, video cameras coming into the scene sometime this summer. Um, the other question that we had had is, you know, will we post more YouTubes uh, more often than once a week? And the answer to that is probably no. Um, it takes us about three hours to get video clipped and uh, produced and logs done. And we do that more than once a week. That's three less hours than we have to spend with the wolves. So at this point, uh, we're looking for video clips and YouTubes to continue on a weekly basis, uh, but uh, we'll not increase that. So hopefully that answers people's questions. And again, if you um, have specific issues, feel free to email me or let me know. Thanks for watching.